Welcome to Wargaming's latest invention in World of Tanks console and we're going to be checking out the brand new Leopard VT2, the Cold War Premium that has even made me as a World War 2 player on World of Tanks actually decide to play Cold War for once and I'm not regretting it. This tank is actually really really fun to play for once and of course the key thing being if you're stuck on silver or you're trying to farm up a load of credits this is almost one of the best tanks that you can possibly pick and that is because this thing has a 65% silver bonus which means that albeit it is on Cold War you are able to earn just probably about 400,000 silver per game and that is if you use a times 2 silver boost. If you're not using a times 2 silver boost expect about 150 to 200,000 silver per game which is of course very very good and I mean that with all intents and purposes. This thing is probably one of the best silver earners that you can possibly get within World of Tanks and Considering Wargaming's actual decent price for a premium tank for once being about 6,000 gold and I'm sure many of you if you've been playing any number of seasons saved up a little bit of gold you can probably afford this one. And to be honest, if I had 6,000 gold lying around and I was struck for silver and I really needed it and I was just aiming to actually grind out a ton of silver, this is the tank I would buy. Like, I'm not even joking, it's very, very easy to play. Cold War, you don't have to think too much, it's more about just kind of sitting there and <laughs> chilling and just putting rounds after one after the other into the opponents. And even if you lose, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to play it super competitively and you can still earn like 400,000 silver per game for, you know, about a 5,000 damage game, which is, in all essences, about 10 shots in the Leopard one, uh, VT2, sorry. Um, and that is basically what this tank is all about. It's all about just being very much a kind of... You kind of have to be a little bit aggressive because you have basically a medium tank that has a little bit of armour in the turret. But you aren't going to be bouncing very much and so you kind of have to use the DPM of the tank to kind of perform better than some of the heavy tanks that you'll be facing. And now, I guess in the gameplay in the background, what you can see me doing here is getting into the perfect position. The exact perfect position that you want to take your VT2 in on Redshire, especially in this kind of matchup where it's standard battle. And effectively, I'm holed down against all of these opponents. Now, if they've got really high penetration, they'll probably go through you. That is pretty much the same for all tanks on Cold War. If you basically have like super high penetration, no matter what tank you're coming up against, you're penning it anyway. But for those tanks that are kind of normal to average tanks that you'll be facing, they're not going to be able to do that. And considering the reload of this tank being pretty decent, you're reloading in approximately 7.3 seconds, you can be the kind of aggressive tank in the game and you can rack up a lot of damage really, really quickly. And essentially, if you're after silver, racking up damage really quickly, even if it means that you get taken out of the game, is perfect because you can swap between this tank with the times 2 silver or without, whatever the case may be, you can still use this tank perfectly. Um, and effectively you'll be able to earn thousands and hundreds of thousands of silver per game and you can swap out to a different tank, maybe the Season Pass Rank 100 reward, the Leopard 1A1, which is of course the kind of premium Leopard 1 uh, that's in the game already. So you can do that and that is exactly what I would be recommending to you guys if you're after grinding silver. Now if you're not after grinding silver and you're purely wondering whether this tank is competitive in the game, well... I suppose that you'll be seeing a lot of these VT2s in the game, so it's difficult to kind of compare it again in the general play because the matchmaker is just absolutely filled with all of them in the matchmaker right now. But regardless of kind of the matchup that you'll be facing in 90% of your games right now, you can still do really well. And albeit, you know, in the background gameplay that you're seeing here, we're kind of getting YOLO'd by the majority of the team. You can still, some of the rounds are bouncing, most of them aren't, and that's kind of how you have to play this tank. And albeit we had a pretty terrible kind of result in terms of how it ended up, 9-3 to and probably ended up 10-2 to or 10-0 or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, we still ended up picking 5,600 damage and 1,500 assistance. And if we actually skip ahead to the results screen here at the end of it, as you can see, the defeat 
showing perfectly on the screen there, we still picked up 355,000 on a defeat where we only really did 5,600 damage and 1,500 assistance, which by all intents and purposes is not a terrible round, but yeah, earning 355,000 silver, that is like a cold or World War II player's kind of dream I guess and yeah this tank does that perfectly. Now then I really want to get your opinions on the VT2 because ultimately I'm just one player I'm not predominantly a Cold War player so for me the tank performs really well but obviously I know that there's the FE4 2 on 1 in the game which can be a bit of a nightmare against pretty much every tank so far and so I guess comparing this to the FV is kind of it is up there it can definitely compete to a degree but is it as good probably not but then again like literally 99% of the tanks in Cold War that meet the FE4 211 don't really compete anyway so there's not much of a, a case there to really argue but what you can actually use this tank like, and that's what the gameplay in the background is doing, is it is very much a sniper tank. If you've ever played German tanks in World of Tanks, you'll know exactly what I mean. This thing has unbelievable accuracy, but that doesn't mean that you have to sit in the back. You don't have to be a sniper, but if you do it at the beginning of the game where you can pick up some damage early on and then progress through wherever you decide that you want to go, that's kind of how you can maximize your game to be able to have the results that you're looking for. Now what you'll notice in Cold War is obviously because you have such, um, I guess, uh, the ability to spot people even when they're undetected because render range is always on and every single tank that you come up against is visible in the game as long as they're actually visible uh, during your sights and so you can do things like this you can literally snipe really really well and of course if you know the maps if you know usual places where people will cross you see where usual people will camp then you can do things like this where you're just basically farming tanks that have no real chance of doing anything to you and therefore, you know, it feels a little bit cheesy, but at the end of the day, what I'm playing this tank is for uh, kind of fun games, to be casual, to not really have to try hard, and it also means I can earn a load of silver, which is the kind of the key reason why I play Cold War. I don't particularly enjoy it as much as World War II, hence why you see a lot more World War II content coming out on this channel, but... Yeah, I think that what I'm trying to get at is that this tank can be played in a variety of different scenarios and all are actually beneficial. You can do it in whatever way really that you want to play. And that is really where I think a lot of people um, niche their, themselves down into various different tanks and various different play styles and they think, oh, I'm never going to be able to play this tank because it's X, Y and Z. When actually you can play whatever tank that you want dependent on the playstyle of the tank itself. So this tank you can play in a variety of different ways. You pick something like a really slow mouse, you can't play like a light tank, you can't play spotting, you know, well you can but it's just not going to work very well. Whereas this one will be an all rounder, you can play to whatever strengths and advantages that you have and therefore you know you can have games where you feel like you carried, you can have games where you feel like you really helped the team by spotting and doing all of these various different things. So. I think for an all-rounder player, as a full review of the tank, which ultimately we don't usually do like a, a really in-depth review, but I think for this one, and considering like it might be one of the first premium tanks that you buy for Cold War, uh, considering the price tag being pretty decent and the actual rewards that this tank can face, then yeah, I think it is actually beneficial um, to kind of talk about it in a whole sense so that you actually get a picture of what you could expect if you do spend the money, which of course I think will cost you about £20, £19, something like that if you want to purchase this flat out for gold cost. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but there we go, like, should you really spend any money on the game? That's the real question, but that's down to you and ultimately I'm just trying to showcase the value for money, not necessarily whether or not you should spend your money in the first place. But you can see here, we're able to just easily rack up damage. You don't have to poke that much. You don't have to be a super aggressive person. You know, you can play it really aggressively, but 
ultimately for me personally i don't know the maps that w well i know the maps very well but i don't know the kind of meta in cold war as much as most people will do so that's why you're only seeing like 6,000 damage done in cold war here yes i can have the odd game where i do like 9,000 or 10,000 or whatever it might be which is like a good result in cold war but you can see even someone that's literally hopped on they've probably played like a maximum of 100 games in cold war you can see that yeah you can still have good results and if you play cold war with any degree of kind of uh, commitment then you'll know exactly how much how well how good this tank can be and especially when you know the maps properly then you'll be able to have results where you feel like you really are the top dog and you can perform way better than the majority of players in the game so you can see here picking up 5700 damage really really easily and at this point it's kind of time to move i've kind of been in it <laughs> It's one of those scenarios where, like, yes, I could have pushed up much sooner, but when you can fire every single time you reload, should you even bother moving up? It's kind of, yeah, it just becomes a case of, like, sometimes you sit back too much in the game where you're not actually able to fire, and therefore you kind of... Um, negatively impact your team but sometimes it's actually better if you just sit there farming damage continuously for the entire game when you can uh, than actually trying to push up and then lose like 90% of your health but you know that's kind of the balance sometimes you get it wrong sometimes you get it really right and actually staying where you were is actually the best option um but yeah sometimes it's not good so i'm not gonna say like you should go there every game because it definitely won't work every game but yeah for me it definitely worked in that one but you can see here you can get forward you can go 60 kilometers an hour i think you can actually go 65 kilometers an hour with the leper vt2 and of course that is what you can use the tank with as well so speed mobility good gun good dpm fairly okay turret armor hull armor is terrible yeah this tank is really really good it's a brilliant all-rounder and of course if you know how to play cold war you love this tank and of course it makes 400,000 silver once again in this game where we came second on the team picking up nearly 7,000 combined and yeah what a fantastic uh, result for the last two games and of course picking up like what 800,000 silver in two games yeah ridiculous thank you very much for watching of course, if you're interested in actually taking a look at the Leopard 1A1, which is, of course, the Season Rank 100 reward, which is similar to this one, uh, then have a look on the left-hand side. But if you're interested in gameplay and tank reviews, looking at various different tanks, whether that's World War II or Cold War, then have a look at the right-hand side, which covers loads of different topics. I really recommend it if you're after any kind of new release tank. There'll be all of them pretty much in that gameplay and tank reviews playlist. And just scroll through the thumbnails. They've all got the tanks that you are looking at in there. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy one of those videos and I'll see you there. Goodbye.